Good morning and welcome to the United Benefice of Holy Innocence and St. Mark in this Ascension Tide 2020. You are very welcome from wherever you're joining us for morning prayer today, Wednesday, the 27th of May. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and clothe us with your power from on high. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Creator God, to you be praised and glory forever. As your Spirit moved over the face of the waters, bringing light and life to your creation, pour out your Spirit on us today, that we may walk as children of light and by your grace reveal your presence. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with faithful love and compassion, who satisfies you with good things, so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness and the judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom has dominion over all. Bless the Lord, you angels of his, you mighty ones who do his bidding and hearken to the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm today is Psalm 29. The refrain, the Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. Ascribe to the Lord, you powers of heaven. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is mighty in operation. The voice of the Lord is a glorious voice. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flash of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forests bare. In his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the water flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. Open our ears, glorious Lord Christ, to hear the music of your voice above the chaos of this world. Open our eyes to see the vision of your glory, for you are our King now and forever. Amen. Our reading today is from 1 Kings 19, verse 1 to 18. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So may the gods do to me and more also. If I do not make your life like the life of one of them by this time tomorrow, then he was afraid. He got up and fled for his life, and came to Beersheba, 
which belongs to Judah, he left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough. Now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food for forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mountain of God. At that place he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Heziel as king over Aram. Also you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat of Abel-Meholah, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Heziel, Jehu shall kill. And whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I believe seven thousand in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. This is the word of the Lord. A responsory. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your people and kindle in us the fire of your love. All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God and fellow heirs with Christ. Come, Holy Spirit, Fill the hearts of your people. Renew the face of your creation, Lord, pouring on us the gifts of your Spirit, and kindle in us the fire of your love. For the creation waits with eager longing for the glorious liberty of the children of God. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your people, and kindle in us the fire of your love. A reflection on the reading from 1 Kings brought to us by Christopher Herbert. Verse 12 says, And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. Now that's more like it. Most of us have not experienced the call of God in dramatic fashion. In spite of Paul's Damascus Road event being given archetypal status, most of us are closer to Elijah than to Paul. We may not have longed for the unequivocal sign as in yesterday's reading, but in fact what we have been given is a kind of persistent ache, an inner unease, a profound sense of being encountered, 
but by a voice that is subtle, like a sound of sheer silence. And that whisper, that still small voice as the authorized version so poetically describes it, does not go away. It lodges itself deeply within our souls until we give in to its persistent and challenging request. And when we wave the white flag and surrender, we discover that the sound of sheer silence still haunts us, though it changes and becomes a melody to which we feel bound to respond. We may move in time with the music for a while, but then it forces us to our knees in prayer. We then gradually, oh so gradually, that we need to wait upon God, simply wait. And that too can be an agony. It all seems unbelievable. What, me? Why? The questions do not stop. Can't it wait until... But inside that process of perplexed waiting, there is a presence that convinces us that the journey into the unknown must soon begin. And now for the Benedictus or the Song of Zechariah. The refrain, Christ has gone up on high and has led captivity captive. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Christ has gone up on high and has led captivity captive. Alleluia. Let us pray through Christ, who ever lives to make intercession for us, as we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. As we pray for the church throughout the world, we give thanks for Justin and John, Archbishops, and for Stephen, Archbishop-elect of York. For our bishops in this diocese, Christopher and Jonathan, Richard and Carraway, and the bishops in our link diocese in Zimbabwe, Ignatius in central Zimbabwe, Eric in Manikaland, Cleopas in Matabitiland, and Godfrey and Mashfingo, for all clergy and people in the care of our bishops. Today in the Diocese of Southwark, we pray for St. John the Evangelist Shirley, for Lou Gail the Vicar, for Andy Dovey the Assistant Priest, for Barry Goodwin and Jackie, the readers, for St. John, Church of England Infant and Junior Mixed School, for all who work there, and for the children who, some are there and some are at home at the moment. In the wider Anglican Communion, we pray for the Most Reverend Mark Lawrence MacDonald, National Indigenous Bishop of Canada, and for the Right Reverend Clement Ekpe, Bishop of Ahuada, Nigeria, for all priests and people in their care. 
Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. As you send down upon us the gift of your Spirit and renew your church with power from on high. Lift up our hearts to the heavenly places and inspire us to serve you as a royal priesthood. As we pray for those who live, work, and worship in the parishes of Holy Innocence and St. Mark in South Norwood, and for those who may be visiting the parish at this time. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let all peoples acknowledge your kingdom and grant on earth the blessing of peace as we pray for Elizabeth, our Queen, and we give thanks for Boris, our Prime Minister, and the members of Parliament of both houses, that they would lead with integrity, with humility, the people you have given them here in this land to lead. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. May peace abound and righteousness flourish, that we may vanquish injustice and wrong at this time as it takes place in our communities. We pray for those who are in any kind of need, for those who are sick in body, mind or spirit, those in hospital and hospices, those who are at home in care homes. Among them, we pray for Mick and Ruth, Nikki, Diane, Helen, Enid, Alec, Jennifer and Reuben, Una and Ted, Marie, Gabrielle, Barbara, for Rosie and Martin and the Hewish family, and for Gloria. We pray too for those who are bereaved at this time, for the Ledette and Forbes families, for Julie, Sophie, and the Bates family, for the Messer and Scorgi families, for the Angus, the Corbin, and the Holyoke families, that they would know your comfort and your healing and wholeness at this time. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Help us to proclaim the good news of salvation and grant us the needful gifts of your grace, as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ, those who have died this past night on their own, and those who will die today, that their souls and the souls of Maggie and Ruth, Roy and Werner, Ron, Sharon and Don, and all the faithful departed, through the mercies of God, will rest in peace and rise in glory, and that your light would perpetually shine upon them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. So we commend the world for which Christ prays to the mercy and protection of God. As we say our collect, O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. We beseech you, leave us not comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to the place where our Saviour Christ is gone before, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Being made one by the power of the Spirit, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive them who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the Spirit kindle in us the fire of God's love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you for joining us for our morning prayer today on Wednesday, the 27th of May. Do have a blessed day and if you can, join us for Compline at 9 o'clock tonight. Remember that we 
have changed for morning prayer and Compline this week as we try new prayer systems. So do have a blessed day and join us this nine o'clock this evening for Compline. Thank you.